are not too happy, and that's okay. Hey, this is Jamie at Useful Knowledge. Well, this year I have planted sugar cane, and I've got about three of these little sections of sugar cane that I've planted. This one in particular has some unwanted guests. So if you'll notice, back on the back side is a fire ant mound, and they somehow have built up on the edge of the sugarcane patch here. I'm just gonna go ahead and show you what they're what they'll do. Well there you go. They're not too happy. And that's okay. They're not gonna be very happy in a minute because I'm gonna put diatomaceous earth all over them. And we're gonna see how long it takes this diatomaceous earth to kill this mound. So if you've seen any of my other videos on diatomaceous earth, that's exactly what we're going to use. I'm going to zoom over there and show you. This is Red Lake diatomaceous earth. Okay, I got this at the co-op yesterday. All right, and the reason I want to use diatomaceous earth is because of that right there. That's my sugar cane. I don't want chemicals in my sugar cane. Okay, in order to do this, I'm gonna go ahead and get them stirred up really well. These ants have crawled all the way up this sugar cane. All right, <clears throat> so now I'm just gonna put diatomaceous earth around them. And all over them. As you can see, instantly after putting this diatomaceous earth on, the ants change behavior. I mean, it's like walking around on shards of glass for an ant. What happens when I put diatomaceous earth around the mound, the workers will quit foraging for food. Once that happens, your queen is gonna die and the mound's gonna die. The best thing about this is I'm not putting chemicals anywhere near my sugar cane plants. That can be absorbed by the sugar cane. Okay, we'll check back on this in the next few days and check out the progress of the diatomaceous earth versus the ant mound. Okay, here's an update. It's been 24 hours since I first put diatomaceous earth on this ant mound that's in my sugar cane patch. So I want to show you what's going on there. I'm going to try to zoom in. Those are dead ants. You can see they're all over the place here. So we're gonna give them another shot of diatomaceous earth. I'm gonna stir them up a little bit more. There's still a few walking around, getting on the diatomaceous earth, and I guess they're going down here to die. But uh, we're gonna stir them up again and give them another shot of diatomaceous earth. So I'm back out here at my sugar cane patch. And obviously there's a lot of grass and weeds. I'm fixing to get that out of there, but I wanted to kill this ant mound first. It's took it about two weeks, but it's finally dead. And while I'm talking about that, a lot of people say, hey, they just move. Well, I'm gonna show you around this because they don't just move in my experience. There is not another ant mound around here. They did not just move. Okay, so let me show you what we got. Where it was you can see they're dead all right so this was interesting this mound had some of those bigger um, kind of larger variety of, of fire ants in it and uh, it took them longer to die they actually uh, there was a lot of them that died straight up but um, over the past couple of weeks I'd come out here about every other day and stir them up and the pockets would get smaller and smaller and smaller. And eventually they did die, but it was kind of interesting because the pockets of the mound just got smaller and smaller and smaller. And they were active. They just finally just ran out of gas. And uh, there may be a few stragglers running around, but the mound is dead. So we hope you gained some useful knowledge 
on how to kill fire ants around important things like what you're going to be eating without using poison. In this case, it's my sugar cane or it may be your vegetable garden. Okay, we got it all mulched up and I went ahead and threw some diatomaceous earth over it because I saw a few flea beetles on the leaves and stalks when I was mulching it. Thanks for watching.